What's going on everyone? Jaronism, back with another video for you today. Discussing NASA and their proofs and their evidence to what they tell us all is the truth. Now the reason this is important is because, well, NASA single-handedly gets to decide where it is that we live. Now, if where we live is told to us based on fact and evidence, then so be it. If we live in a vast universe full of many suns like our own and planet Earth is nothing but one of trillions of other planets, then so be it. However, if it is true that we are unique and that there is not billions of other planets, then I find it imperative and absolutely essential that we know this information. So if anybody is to be challenged at a high level, it needs to be NASA. Uh, they need to be held to the highest standard of proof and evidence. And in no way should NASA be given a free ride or a free pass. They haven't deserved it. They haven't earned it. And therefore, they should be held to the highest of standards. And so this video is just looking at some of that. I'm going to take a look at the screen now and you can see this rotating globe courtesy of ESA. And you can just look at that and tell me if you think you live there. Again, if you do, that's up to you. I don't think I live on that spinning ball. That's my opinion. And we're starting to learn the opinion of many others as well. So that's when we need to require proof. Why is it that NASA in 2015, an era of HD video, high definition photos, why are we still given the same image from 1972 as proof of the Earth in space? We see videos of vast galaxies and satellites landing on comets, but we're not shown video proof of the Earth spinning out in space. We have a rover on Mars taking selfies taking videos of sunsets. Why are we not shown a video of a lunar eclipse from the moon? Now a saying that was made famous by Carl Sagan was extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And believe it or not, being on a rotating ball in the vastness of space, rotating a thousand miles per hour and flying around the sun at 66,000 miles per hour and flying around the galaxy at a half a million miles per hour while flying around the universe at 1.3 million miles per hour is an extraordinary claim. And so NASA should know that the requirement by those of us who must take their word for it would be that they show us the extraordinary evidence. And they have not done that. In fact, everything they do is show us just enough evidence to keep us quiet but is it enough to show proof? Now, I've heard a lot of people talk about the mathematical proof that the Earth is a globe, the mathematical proof of gravity, and they are happy calling this proof. Now, even Einstein knew, if we look back at his geometry and experience speech, when he said his opinion regarding mathematics was, as far as the laws of mathematics refer to reality, they are not certain, and as far as they are certain, they do not refer to reality. He continued, It seems to me that complete clearness as to this state of things first became common property through the new departure in mathematics, which is known by the name of mathematical logic or axiomatics. The progress achieved by axiomatics consists in its having neatly separated the logical formal from its objective or intuitive content. According to axiomatics, the logical formal alone forms the subject matter of mathematics, which is not concerned with intuitive or other content associated with logical formal. 
Now, if you don't know what an axiom is, an axiom is a rule or principle that people accept as true. So what's basically going on here is if you accept that we live on a sphere, then there is mathematical proof that will prove that as being true. However, you must first accept the axiom that we live on a ball. If you're asking for proof of that ball without assuming that we're on a sphere, well guess what? Math can't tell you that. We need to see it in reality first and this is where NASA and the scientific community has dropped the ball. And this is where we reach the problem of is NASA trustable? The scientific community thinks so even despite their occult beliefs and practices both in the past and today. But let's take a listen to a recent NASA Senate hearing and you tell me if you think they're trustable. What is our next destination for America in space? The next destination for America in space, and I'm not being trite when I answer this, is the International Space Station. We've got to get there four more times this year. Uh, the big, the long-term destination, after we successfully close out the space shuttle program, uh, the ultimate destination is Mars. And there are intermediate points that we're going to have to get to before we are capable of going to Mars. If you gave me all the money in the federal budget today, I could not get a human to Mars. I could not morally put a human in a spacecraft and launch them on an eight-month mission to Mars because I do not understand the radiation All right, so what is our next destination in space? The next ultimate destination is no, Mars. No, the next one. Congressman, the next destination, as I said before, is the International Space Station. And All we've right, got let's to do that not be trite then. What is the one after that? It's Mars. So there's nothing in between, as far as you're concerned. But there are intermediate stops what are the they? way there. What's the next one? The moon is a, is a destination. Lagrange points are destinations. Which one is next? You mean, where do we go immediately next? Is that, is that the question? That's what next means. Congressman, I, we are in the process of developing a program. I will, ha I will have to be able to give you the details, and I will come back and make it for the record in the coming months. So why are we even talking about how to get to the next destination? We don't even know what that is. Congressman, we do know what it is. We know what, what it is. What is it? Congressman, I, you know, we can go back and forth uh, forever. We seem to have to here. I'm looking for an answer. Okay. The next destination in the Constellation program was the moon. What After about that, now, was, since you're uh, planning Congressman, to eliminate the that? The program of record and the program to which we are working right now, uh, because you have told me that I have to continue to, to work the Constellation program, uh, you know, we're, we're talking about the 2011 budget, but if you ask me right now, the next destination is the moon. Okay, good. Um, now, the Augustine Report uh, came up with four options and several sub-options or alternatives within the options. Which one did the administration adopt? The administration adopted the recommendations of the Augustine Report, which, which was the flexible option? path. The flexible path. The flexible path. Yes, sir. Okay, so you, that, you that think that... That was the recommendation of the Augustine Committee. All right, now, you can correct me if I'm wrong, but I did read the report, and it seemed to me that the flexible path involved continuing the Constellation program. Is that a fair statement? Uh, the Constellation, you know, the Augustine Committee did not recommend cancellation of the, of the, of the Constellation program. That's so correct. then I'm right. Uh, you're right that they did not recommend cancellation of the Constellation Program? Uh, the, yes, flexible pl the flexible path, in path included continuation of the Constellation Program. The, the flexible path did not necessarily include I think you, you, you're cherry-picking from the report. The, pr the report said... I just want to know why you had all these people come together, the people who knew the most about the space program, and then you ignored their recommendation to continue the Constellation Program. Congressman, That's what they, I'm did not, they did not recommend continuation of the Constellation Program. What the they flexible said, path did. C Congressman, what the report said was that they find no technical challenges in the Constellation Program that cannot be met the way that NASA has always met them. However, to do so will cost a significant amount more than anyone will reasonably be able to place in a budget. Uh, All right, regarding the budget, it seems to be your plan to put people in space through commercial programs. Is that correct? I intend to put people into low Earth orbit through commercial programs. How often has that happened so far? Uh, we do it today. 
explain to me. Go ahead. Well, today uh, I go out and, and I pay uh, USA to operate the space shuttle out of the Kennedy Space Center. Uh, the vast majority of my workforce right now is, is Congress, Congresswoman Edwards mentioned, 89% uh, of the workforce in the shuttle program today are, con are contractors. So you consider the space shuttle program to be a commercial program? I consider the space shuttle program to be evidence that, that commercial entities can successfully just, operate. Please uh, answer the question. My time is limited. Yes. Okay. So what's wrong with continuing it then? We would not, I do not think it would be wise to continue the space shuttle program beyond the, the four additional flights that we're on track to fly right now. I think that would not be prudent. But if one's commercial and the other's commercial, what's the advantage of switching? The advantage is that we, are, we relieve ourselves of the, the responsibility and the cost for operating and maintaining infrastructure as we do today with the space shuttle program. Isn't it true Europe. that commercial entities have never put a man in orbit? Ever? Commercial entities have put every human in orbit that we, the United States has flown. If, uh, and, and you can take that up with North American Rockwell or Boeing or the United Space Alliance. Honestly, I'll tell you. My time is up now, so I'm going to tell you this briefly. I think that what you're doing is taking a shot in the dark. You have no way of knowing if any commercial entity will ever be able to put a man in orbit, no matter how much money you throw at them. What you're doing is you're taking NASA's manned space program and making it a faith-based initiative. I yield the rest of my time. Now, I don't know about you, but for me, it is obvious that NASA is not one of the world's most upfront and transparent organizations in the world and that should go without even saying but let's take a look at something I saw on the internet the other day it was simply a little web page that said can the curvature of the earth only be seen from outer space and as the article starts it says if you didn't know that the earth is a sphere there are three common observances you could use to convince yourself that it is First, says the first common observance is the shape of the moon. First, the face of the full moon is circular. Okay, I would agree with that. And that would lead you to believe that it is a sphere. Again, did you catch that? The observation is that the moon is circular, and that would lead you to believe that it is a sphere, rather than a disk. But let's continue. When the moon eclipses the sun, the shape of the shadow is always circular. This is true which clenches a spherical shape for the moon. So, if you got that, they somehow have now clinched based on the circular moon that it is a sphere. It says, by extrapolation, you could now assume that the Earth is a sphere also. So that's their evidence. Then it says, also notice that when the moon is being eclipsed by the Earth during a lunar eclipse, the part of the moon that is eclipsed is actually the shadow of the Earth, this shadow tells you the Earth is a sphere, just like the moon. We're going to talk about that a little bit and the lack of evidence for any kind of uh, eclipse. And it says a third way to see that the Earth is a sphere is to look at how objects in the distance disappear as you get further away. For example, a 100-foot tall ship that is 15 miles away is not visible. That's because it is blocked by the curvature of the Earth. As it approaches, it rises from the tip of the mast first is visible, then more and more of the ship comes into view as the ship gets closer. So that is their three evidences of a spherical Earth. And we'll cover some of those and why in no way should you be able to take from this article that the Earth is a sphere. So here you have a picture of the moon. And you can see, if you look at it closely, that it has no hot spot as would be required, and I'll show you here in a second. If you're learning to draw, or if you looked up how to draw a sphere, and look at the shadowing that would be required of it, that the moon does not show that at all. Notice here, I have two different balls, and I'm both showing you what the shadowing should look like. If you look at the left side, the letter A, showing you that the top and bottom, letter C, of that ball on the left are darker because they would be harder to see. You would see the center easier than you would see the top and the bottom, therefore they'd be darker. You'll also see that the letter B is showing you in what direction the light is coming from. Now if we look at the ball on, letter, on the right side, same thing. A and C are darker and shadowed. B tells you 
exactly where the source of the light is with the hot spot. And then D showing you the darker middle. Here's another picture of the moon where we see there is no such shadows on our moon. It is completely lit in total, in completeness. There is no darker top, there is no darker bottom. There is no hot spot showing where the source of the light is. So to me it does not even show at all that it is a sphere. A sphere would show significant changes in the top and bottom. And if you think about it, if we are underneath the moon, being it is above our heads, we should be able to see more of the bottom of the moon than we would see of the top. Yet when you look at the moon, look at it tonight, it's pretty close to being full. You'll see that you don't see any more of the bottom than you do the top. In fact, it looks like a disk. That you're seeing the whole thing in completeness, but not at all like a sphere. If you look at this movie clip, it's a little bit different than you would expect to see the moon because of the different lights in the room. However, you can see, since we are underneath that ball, we can see the underside of it. Another thing is if you look at this picture here, which shows a transit of Mercury or Venus, how could you say that that item that is passing the sun is a sphere? It looks like a circle. Now, in regards to some of the eclipse proofs, this particular picture you can find if you just look up Blood Moon Eclipse. Uh, you'll find this right in your first couple results. The photographer here, his name is Karim Saad, and I'm putting his description, I'm sorry, his contact information in the description. Because if you're like me, you'll want to send him an email and just mention to him that uh, clearly this is a fake image. If we look at why, you'll see in my first two, the first two images that he's shown here, look at what you would call the butt of the moon, the little explosion point, and you'll notice that that has moved. You'll also notice here that in between the fourth and fifth image, look at the difference in the noticeable areas of the moon. So you can see I drew some lines to show you where they're at on the left, and then look at the right, they're significantly higher. This is another a screenshot of an eclipse that you can find on YouTube and you can see clearly that this is their little lead to image and then if you look at where the butt of the moon is here and then look at when the image when the video starts look where the butt is now so these are the kind of things I'm noticing when I'm looking at eclipses I'm seeing the moon being turned in different directions and I'm seeing video footage that is turned off right before the end of the eclipse or right before the beginning of it. So if anybody has any complete footage of an eclipse, I'd love to see that because as of right now, I don't think any of it is sufficient proof at all. Uh, here you see a diagram of them showing how the lunar eclipse takes place, which is a short eclipse, usually 90 minutes in total from the time that the Earth's shadow appears on the moon until it disappears. But if you look at that, how could it only take 90 minutes? For that to happen. All you have to do is take a look at that diagram and understand that if the moon takes a month to go all the way around the earth, how is it that the period of time it moves through the earth's shadow takes 90 minutes? It does not make any sense. Here you see another image of an eclipse. Somebody needs to explain this to me. Is not the shadow coming from the top? How could that be possible? Then is the sun underneath us? That makes no sense. None at all. So hopefully somebody has an explanation for that, because I'm just starting to see a bunch of fraud. Here we have a picture of the leader of JAXA, which is the Japanese space program, and the head of NASA. The reason I bring up JAXA is because a lot of people call them a secondary source, they like to tell me that NASA isn't solely responsible for our view of the Earth, that other space agencies are. But here's JAXA showing us, for the first time ever, an eclipse from the moon. Now, again, I'm not that smart, I'm not a scientist, but I'm not that stupid that this Earth took up the entirety of the sun, just like the moon takes up the entirety of the sun from our vantage point during an eclipse. How would the Earth not cover it completely? 
we're not the same size as the moon. We're four times bigger. Wouldn't the shadow over the sun be four times bigger? How would it be identical? It wouldn't. So these are them just passing off little nonsense, calling it truth, calling it fact, calling it proof, and it's not. This is a the Japanese orbiter that is orbiting the moon. This is a video they've shown that is their proof of the Earth. And you'll see, as you look at that, that the clouds are not moving, that the Earth is not spinning. And if you just look at the ground here in a second, there's another video also by them as well and by the same orbiter. Here it is. Now what just happened with the ground there? Pretty disgusting if you ask me that these people are considered scientific, that this is in any way considered any kind of proof, or that we should accept what they hand us as being evidence of anything. This to me is evidence of nothing other than fakery, CGI graphics, and nonsense. For starters, look at the size of the Earth from the moon and realize that we're smart enough to know what the moon looks like from Earth. So can't we, using our own brains and our own reasoning, decide what size the Earth would look from the moon's vantage point? Yet this supposed real-life image clearly shows nothing like we would expect. Think of the detail that we can see on the moon from Earth. Zoom in with a nice camera and you can see high levels of detail. Do we ever get to see that kind of detail from the moon looking at Earth? Of course not. We see these faraway views, the tiny little Earth, the no morphing clouds, and the size is just way off. These are the kind of things that we should question and just in what I've showed you already is enough questioning to deem what NASA says is complete insufficient proof of their extraordinary claims. This is another image or video from JAXA showing the final moments of their orbiter's path until it crashed into the moon. And you'll see here now all of a sudden we can only see a strip. There's nothing to the left or right. What was wrong with the images we just saw? Why do we have to see something different here? Does not make any sense and anybody who just sees this and believes it has obviously chosen to give up their own intellect and the use of their own brain and decision-making skills. For instance, this is NASA's proof that we landed on the moon when they sent their orbiter to show us the landing spots of Apollo and you'll see what they're doing here is just changing the pixels just enough that they can call this proof. It's pretty gross and again if they were an organization that had earned our respect and earned our trust then that's another story but that's not exactly who NASA is. Of course the scientific community tells us if we doubt the NASA story that we're idiots and brain dead. And people like Professor Brian Cox who says the moon landings happened and it's the question is nonsensical. It's like saying was America ever discovered? Right. Well, yes it was. Did we work out how or did we discover penicillin? Yes. Did we go to the moon? Yes. That's the evidence. There is no information content or use in debating it anymore. So, if that were the case there would be sufficient evidence that we went to the moon. And is there? I think not. So my question always goes back to why science feels the need to hold on to NASA so tightly. Science doesn't have any occultic beliefs or any religious connections. However, NASA clearly does. Just look up the occult in NASA and you'll be searching for days. You can just look at their inception and Jack Parsons, who is responsible for JPL, who now works side by side with NASA and all their missions. And look at Jack Parsons and his connection to the occult, his connection to Aleister Crowley, 
and his connections to trying to bring about the Antichrist in the late 60s. Uh, these things are all part of NASA's past, as well as its connection to the Nazis, and the fact that a thousand of the scientists who were Nazi war criminals were brought over by the United States, and this way they were able to uh, avoid any kind of trial, and instead were just placed at the head of NASA to start a rocket program. Here's a song you might enjoy from Tom Lerner. Gather round while I sing you of Werner von Braun, a man whose allegiance is ruled by expedience. Call him a Nazi, he won't even frown. Nazi schmazi, says Werner von Braun. Don't say that he's hypocritical. Say rather that he's apolitical. Once the rockets are up, who cares where they come down? <laughs> That's not my department, says Werner von Braun. <laughs> Some have harsh words for this man of renown. But some think our attitude should be one of gratitude Like the widows and cripples in old London town Who owe their large pensions to Werner von Braun You too may be a big hero Once you've learned to count backwards to zero In German or English I know how to count down and I'm learning Chinese, says Werner von Braun. Add to that everyone's favorite astronaut, Buzz Aldrin. And you can see here he's with Luther A. Smith, the Sovereign Grand Commander, with the Masonic flag that Aldrin says he took with him to the moon, something that uh, none of us were told. But is this the kind of uh, religious beliefs that our scientific organization of NASA is allowing its astronauts to go to the moon with paraphernalia from Freemasonic lodges? Not only that, but if you didn't know, look up Lodge Number 2000, Tranquility Lodge. That lodge is actually the Masonic Lodge on the moon. Yep, I guess Buzz took it upon himself to grant them the lodge that is currently on the moon. Here in this letter to the Grand Commander, he says, it was a great moment in my life to be so cordially welcomed to the House of the Temple on September 16th, 1969. Uh, then he goes on to say, my greatest pleasure, however, was being able to present you on this occasion, the Scottish Rite flag, which I carried on the Apollo 11 flight to the moon, emblazoned in color with the Scottish Rite double-headed eagle, the Blue Lodge emblem, and the Sovereign Grand Master's insignia. So these are the kind of things that we see from NASA. Are they really out to advance science or are they serving in their devotion to these mystery gods of Egypt? Moral of the story is why in the world would we give these people the benefit of the doubt? Look at these three here on the cover of the Apollo 11 post-flight press conference sheet. Do those three men seem very excited about what they just did? Or do they seem like they might have a little secret that they can't tell? So now we'll get into some new stuff you may have never seen. Here we've got a video I found from the National Aeronautics and Space Administration Langley Research Center. Remember that, I'll be bringing it up here shortly and a lot. Uh, this film was released a long time ago. It's very old. Uh, and it is an evaluation of a gravity simulation technique for studies of man's self-locomotion in lunar environments. And you'll see here, basically, you can see the NASA logo up there in the upper left. But basically, they're just doing some, stimul some simulations regarding the gravity or lack thereof on the moon. But definitely an interesting video in regards to the possible moon landing hoax. Remember they had never been there before so I guess when you haven't been there before you know all about the gravity there. One of my major problems with 
NASA is the fact that just take a look at what goes into a launch nowadays. If we're going to launch something, they have to have the perfect weather. The launch pad is set up, which takes probably weeks. You have to have the ground crew. You have to have everything going just perfectly in order to launch. Now remember, also, we have SpaceX trying to launch and land a rocket, which they have not yet been able to do. They cannot launch a rocket, have it land, and then relaunch it again. Yet, if you believe in the moon landings, we did it six times already. We landed on the moon, and then with no launch pad, no launch team, no ground team, no perfect weather, nothing, they just launched right off again from the moon, reconnected with the orbiting lunar orbiter, and came on home, no issues, no problems. Is that really believable to you? Do you really think that's the way things go? We never had one mistake. Those things just fired right off, took off from the moon, not an issue, never lost a human. They made it seem awfully simple, didn't they? Here we can see some more gravity video. Here's some other video I found just to show you. This is video from Apollo 8, I believe. As you see, the camera is going across the lunar surface. Now, if you pay attention here for a second, you'll see something interesting. And that the camera will, as showing the lunar surface, watch it flip. See that? How did that happen? Another video of theirs, which clearly could not be any faker. But these are the kind of things that the scientific community will just pass off and call proof. But not me. Now, I would be the first one to admit that this is a lot of circumstantial evidence. Nothing is concrete proof that we did not go to the moon. But when you add all these things together, that's when you need to be able to trust your intuition, trust your brain, trust your own eyes to make a decision for you. Not just what the scientific community says, because I will tell you they are wrong. I mean, how do you believe that NASA lost all the footage from the original moon landing? Following a Freedom of Information request, NASA admitted they lost all the original video footage from the Apollo missions. That's insanity. So, now I wanted to show you some images. I hope that you'll watch them carefully. And I also linked in the description to all the PDFs where I found this information, uh, all courtesy of NASA. So hopefully you can see uh, what I see, and this is the most damning evidence I've seen to date of the NASA moon hoax. How about this image? Clearly a sound stage. Clearly we've got a gigantic light coming through from the right-hand side. Looks to be the sun. Uh, we've got the moon lander there. We've got a giant helium balloon uh, that would definitely take some weight off of the astronauts and give them the appearance of uh, lesser gravity. Uh, this image is one of the most damning I've seen. Unbelievable image. Next we have uh, this gentleman sitting back in a chair, drawing every detail of the moon, making sure they don't miss a bit, because that's something you would do if you were really going there, right? Or would you do it when you are pretending you went there? You can see another image of him from the side here. We also see him here drawing every crater, nook and cranny on the moon, which would not really be necessary unless you were trying to fake something. Another image here, we can see the track clearly behind it, which would easily allow them to show the, the moon lander as it approached the moon's surface. We see again here, making sure every detail of the moon is just right. More drawings of the moon. I don't know about you guys, but uh, this is the kind of thing I look at and just say, we didn't go. 
we got these guys making sure that they see what they want to see. These are some shadows of the moon. Now I don't care what you say, that is a Plaster of Paris model of the moon. Look at the shadows. We don't see mountain ranges and earth casting shadows like that. This gentleman here is looking at some photos very carefully. Notice behind him we've got a little play structure, a model of the lander. Uh, these guys were all out in the fields. They were making sure that they were radioing back exactly where the astronauts would be at each time. We see another lander behind this gentleman out at the Langley facility. I have a nice links to that in the description so you can see. Here's another nice image. Again, if we were just practicing, would we need the black backdrop um, in this little sound stage? Here's another, another uh, little diagram showing the track and the models of the moon. You'll see what they call a projection sphere. So they're projecting onto this sphere what they would see as they're landing. We'll see here this nice little apparatus which uh, allows them to simulate gravity. This image here looks like a giant picture of the moon, but if you want to see how big it is, look at the two gentlemen standing at the bottom. This is the Langley Research Facility. A lot of people say, well, how would they have faked it? Where would they have gone? Well, let's start out with the place that they admit that they used to practice the landing. Because you can really practice landing on zero gravity or one-sixth the Earth's gravity. Base it all off these cables and pulleys. This stuff is so obviously what was used to fake the moon landings. This document here shows that they used microwave technology when doing these practice stunts. If you were practicing it and you were totally open, why would you just not use radio? It's not a big deal if somebody hears you, but instead they hit it all with microwave technology. They wanted to keep people away from the area. This right here is a machine shop uh, out there right where the USGS could use it make whatever you wanted at the time. Does that little structure look familiar on top of that truck? It is the simulator LEM, L-E-M. You can see the little triangle windows out there. We have people from the USGS uh, that were in charge of taking film or taking photos or keeping the area clear. This here, very damning to me. Just a huge soundstage where they are allowing all the stuff to take place so that they can pass it off as being legit. We saw this gentleman before. All these guys work for the USGS Astronomical Division, which you wouldn't think is such thing exists. This guy is uh, making sure that the colors on the camera are correct because that makes a big difference when you're on the moon. We should just test what the cameras are like on Earth, right? These guys are just hanging out. You can see here, this is a little document showing uh, the telemetry room. I love the one is the uh, plotting room. Uh, some of this stuff is a little hard for me to see right now. You can probably see it better than I. So these are the kind of images I'm talking about that just really, you could just see that camera sitting on that astronaut's chest there. How hard would that have been to take photos of that on the moon? And a lot of people, this is a view from outside the makeshift LEM, the triangle window, showing that they're clearly just looking in a field. More interesting photographs. There goes the LEM. So everyone said, oh, it would have taken so many people for them to fake it. Well, not really. If you pay attention also, you can see that uh, a lot of the astronauts from the earlier missions were the ones doing the communications during the later missions. We've got people flat out taking video out there at the uh, crater location. Were these things just used to pass it off? 
We'll never know. Here's their little data station where they're getting all the information. Nothing was live, guys. Just so you know, nothing was live. It wasn't as if they're acting on the moon and we were getting the information live. That's not the way it went. Everything got funneled into centers and then sent out live from there. See here, more video camera footage. We have images like this, which if you've watched any of the old Apollo 11 or early Apollo docking and redocking, all that stuff just looks like it's done in a simulator with black background. Well, start looking around and you'll see these projection, the projection machineries. So hopefully you can read some of this stuff that I cannot read as it's playing in front of me now. But you can see this is a projection sphere as well, or a projecting a planisphere. And these are all from actual NASA documents. This is a Starfield simulator projection. So I'm hoping you guys will realize at this point that I don't care what science says. I don't care what the geniuses of the intellectual community have to say. There's just too much damning evidence in my mind. I mean, look at that. Isn't that exactly what you see on those old films? This is just too much damning evidence for me just to keep letting them get away with it. You would not need all this detail, the redrawing of the moon. Would you need that if you're going there? You got this photo here again. No tracks behind the rover. Pretty self-explanatory. These things were staged and set up. I'm sure you've seen this image a thousand times. There's no way that's real. Have you ever actually looked at the LEM? Take a look right here. I don't know if you can see closely. This thing is black construction paper with masking tape. I kid you not. Look carefully. That's a cardboard box. It's not even close to anything near scientific, and yet we let NASA get away with this stuff. Look at that. Do you think that flew to the moon and then took off from the moon? Come on, guys. So last but not least, let me just say again that if NASA wants us to believe that we went to the moon 45 years ago and just haven't been back, then they need to show their extraordinary evidence for this extraordinary claim. You'll see here, this is just a picture of the Amundsen station at the South Pole. You'll notice parked right in front of that sign is a Freemasonic symbol sitting on a pole right in front of it. Those are the kind of things that make me question what is going on, why is NASA the only company, or the only group responsible for telling me where I live and everything I see from them tells me not to trust them. So, if we are to believe that we live on this sphere Earth and that we're rotating a thousand miles per hour and that gravity is holding us all to the, to the ground, then where's the extraordinary evidence? Where's the proof? And not just what they give us and tell us this is proof, deal with it, but we need to see proof that is actual evidence. Why is there no video of the Earth spinning in space taken from space? We have tons of every, every other kind of video. NASA will give you anything else you want. They'll give you video of Jupiter. They'll give you video of Saturn. But they won't give you video of the place they say you live. You also have to remember that anybody who went public and said anything against what NASA wanted usually ended up dead. Look at Gus Grissom. Pete Conrad, rumor has it, was going to go public in July of 1999. He was killed shortly there before, three weeks before the 30th anniversary. You could take a look at Stanley Kubrick. Whether he had anything to do with it or not, he did make a movie called Eyes Wide Shut that he wanted released exactly on July 16th, 1999, which would have been on the 30-year anniversary. He also died shortly before that. And at that point, they actually cut the movie and made it quite different than his vision of that movie was supposed to be. You could look at Vernon Walters who was in the movie The Dark Side of the Moon which was a mockumentary 
But in that movie, he said something to the effect of, uh, they faked it all, it was all a hoax. Uh, that interview was given on February 9th, 2002. He was dead February 10th, 2002. Again, even if it was a mockumentary, he said something he wasn't supposed to, it looks. And he paid the price. Again, we have SpaceX still trying to get a spacecraft to take off and land again. But NASA did that easily six times between 1969 and 1972. Again, a lot of these images, if you just add up the total amount of images and the amount of time they had to take them, doesn't add up. Which makes sense, because a lot of those images weren't around before 1990. Go ahead and look at some of the quality of those images that you see. Just look up Apollo images. And remember, those pictures were taken between 1969 and 1972. Some of the quality is unbelievable. Then go look at other images from 1969 to 1972, and you'll start to see that a lot of those images that didn't surface till 1990 when the internet started to come out probably weren't taken till 1990. You can also ask, why is there no pictures of Armstrong on the moon? Is it because he refused to have them take any images of him or say the images that they were taking were of him? But no, there's not images of Armstrong on the moon. So again, NASA, if you ask me, you have a lot of explaining to do. And the fact that you blow us all off and expect us to believe your LRO pictures, which are nothing more than pixel changes, is crazy. There's a lot to be proven here. And when they won't prove it, that's why you start to question, is where we live what they say? And if it isn't, why would they hide it? So if you guys want to laugh that the Earth is flat, laugh all you want. If it was a sphere and that was so easily provable, I guarantee you they would have proved it by now. And some of these proofs that are out there are just a joke. This laser pulse that they shoot off the moon that the... Mythbusters decided to sell out on is a joke. Apollo, that's what they call the, the actual thing that shoots the lasers, shoots 20 pulses per second and each pulse has 300 quadrillion photons. And they're lucky if they get one to three back. Not one to three quadrillion, one to three. Also, if you look up May 9th, 1962, several years before we ever went to the moon, they were bouncing lasers off the moon to get the distance at that time. So why now would we believe that it's only because there's these laser reflectors there that they're able to do it? Obviously they were doing it seven years before we ever went to the moon. So a lot of people ask about Russians. Well, what, the Russians, why would they allow us to do this? Well, do you think you see a lot of Russian websites? Do you think you see a lot of Russian newspapers? The fact is that seen across the entirety of Russia, it was called a hoax it was called a fake that's what they told their people and you have to remember what kind of era we were in when Russia was communist and if you know anything about communist Russia is they held everything really close to the sleeve and this may have been something that they were going to wait and hold knowing the truth and when it came time would let out but then remember the Soviet Union fell so these are the kind of things we need to look at and if you're able to Take all this information and say, yeah, we still went. Email me. Say so. Let's chat. Because there's just no way. So, till next time, this is uh, Jaronism telling you we didn't go to the moon. I promise you. And I would definitely retract my promise if NASA gave us any kind of evidence that led me to believe in any way that we've been there. And there's just no way. Humans haven't left low Earth orbit. They've never been more than 200 miles from the Earth. So for them to tell us all these lies and keep going with it, I think it's obvious they're trying to hide something. And we need to do some investigation to figure out what. Or demand that NASA prove it. NASA, you could put a camera on the moon this week and have it filming the Earth. How about for this coming blood eclipse, the blood moon? Eclipse that's coming in later this year. Why not show us this eclipse from the view of the moon? You seem to do everything else just fine. You can show the sunset from Mars. But you won't show us these little things, which would be just send an HD camera to the moon. 
have it show us where the landers are have it sh have it show us where the flags are all these tools all this equipment all this gear how about the moon rover the buggy all those things can be shown on a 1080 HD video camera and all of a sudden nobody could say the earth is flat anymore it'd be impossible nobody could say we never went to the moon anymore it'd be impossible that's called proving it and if I were a scientific organization and people questioned my validity I'd do everything in my power to prove myself and not just keep taking money from people and expecting them to believe me if it's true you went fantastic prove it I'll be the first one to make a video saying I was wrong NASA is a stand-up organization stand-up body of scientific knowledge I'll be the first one and you'll get rid of everyone who's ever said that the moon landings were a hoax prove yourselves to be legit but you won't do it and we know why till next time don't lie to each other take care of each other treat others better than you treat yourself and open up your mind and open up your eyes because there's truth inside don't just listen to what NASA tells you because I have a feeling that uh, truth is the last thing on their mind. Till next time.